Welcome to our live training session number 13, part two. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at getting our Z06 fired up using our HP Tuner software. We're going to be dialing in our idle control and taking a look at the open loop tuning technique. We're going to have a lot to learn, so let's jump into the live training session so we can get started. Welcome back to our live training session here with our Z06 Corvette. In the previous video, we created our custom two bar operating system calibration file. We loaded it to our ECU. Now we're ready to fire up our engine. Now before we do that, we need to jump into our VCM scanner so we can add some custom channels and layouts so we can most effectively tune the fuel and idle control right off the bat. Those are going to be the two things that we have to deal with to get this engine to fire up and run properly and we don't know where we're at in the calibration process with those. So let's jump into our VCM scanner now. If we move into the VCM scanner, um, I have my SAE default channels list loaded here and I simply just went here into my uh, folder, I said load SAE defaults. And I did that on a specific reason because I want to go in and add channels that are only needed to do this very specific task, which is going to be looking at fuel tuning and idle control. That's going to be first. Now, on the Gen 3 ECUs, we only can log a certain amount of channels before it really starts to slow the logging down and we may start to miss data. So, I want to focus in on very specific things and then we can take a look at some other things to add into our channels list and to log and set up here in our layouts so that we can use that in our wide open throttle tuning process. Right now we're just concerned about idle and doing our fuel tuning. So what I'm gonna do um, in this list here, I'm gonna go, I have my, my key powered on, I have my HP tuner cable plugged into the OBD2 port and then plugged into the USB cable on, or the USB port on my laptop. So I'm all connected, my car is powered on, I'm not running. I'm gonna jump in here and go to connect to vehicle. This is important, it's gonna be reading the vehicle type that we're connected to, and it's gonna be populating the PID list or the channels list we have available to log in this PCM. So we can see it's done that. We can find out here on the top, 2003 Chevy Corvette. Um, it's gonna be knowing that this is the vehicle we're working with. So it's gonna have the channels list available to us. So looking in our list, we find these are the default SAE parameters. So if we're looking at a generic scan tool, these would be the parameters that would pop up and we could look at and it's going to be um, kind of a universal across all cars. So that's going to be why I've sort of pulled these up here. Now we need to add some very specific channels here so we can do our logging. Now the very first thing that's going to be super important is that I have a wideband installed on this vehicle. I have an eight NGK AFX wideband and I have it wired into my MPVI Pro HP tuners cable into the analog input one. So we need to go in and set this up for that wideband. That's the very first thing you have to do. And I'm going to be assuming that you're going to have a wideband installed and wired into your HP tuners cable. It's going to make your life much easier as you're going to be following along here and doing your tuning. So if you don't have a wideband, absolutely purchase a wideband, wire it in, and you'll be able to follow along with what I'm doing here. It's going to be, again, making it much, much easier to do your tuning process. So I'll jump into my channels list here, add channel, and in this case, I'm going to be typing in MPVI, and I'm going to be looking here at the MPVI AD input one. That's where I've wired my signal wire from the wideband. So we'll select that and double click. We can see it's added right here into our channels list. Now the next part of this is we have to do a transform function. So we have to, um, this is going to be reading in voltage, and that's not going to be useful. We want to transform the voltage reading in the zero to five volt scale into a wideband reading. So we wanna make sure that when we're seeing our channel come in here, it's gonna be showing us the wideband, that the wideband reading that the wideband display is showing us here in my car. So in order to do that, we'll right click, go to transform, 